We should be going live. Hey. Should be on the spot. Excellent. Coming to you live from down in the basement of my house. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've got your cue music ready to go. I'm we good. should be live and live. So as soon as you want to hit that, I'm going to say, let me put this down in the bottom corner here. And let's drone size that. And I am ready to go. So I will say three, two, one. This is Drink Talk, where we try to solve the world's problems one drink at a time. This week we'll be having sangria and discussing Antarctica. We are your hosts, Brian and Brett. Hey, Brian. Hello. Long time no see, man. Yeah, I know. It's been uh, like not even 24 hours, right? Right. Well, yeah. Just about 24 hours. I close. mean, I had a heck of a time at Beer Fest. We did have a good time out of Beer Fest. Talked to a lot of different breweries, a lot of different people, a lot of different people we just kept running into over and over again. Yeah. That it's we, like, well, yeah, this place is big, but not that big. Right. Because we just did a Beer Fest out at uh, Horseman's Park not that long ago, and there were some uh, familiar faces there again that... Uh, we saw the guys from uh, Backswing Brewing. Uh, they remembered us out there. Uh, we saw Sean from Into the Pint Glass, who uh, who was on the program last week. Yes. So we uh, saw the people out at Nebraska Brewing Company again. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of people that we saw out there. It was a really good time. It was out at uh, Warner Park. This time it was my first go-around. But you said you'd been there before? Yeah, I've been to that one before. Um, uh, Andrew and I went out there. Uh, and had a spectacular time. But the way to do it is uh, the way we did it, which was Uber, Uber it. Yes. It was so cheap. It was like, what, 22 bucks, you said? Round R- trip. Round trip. Yeah. Round trip, 22 bucks, you know. And hey, no DUIs. So, yeah. hey, hey. <laughs> win win. Exactly. Yeah. So we had a, and we didn't have to worry about, uh, I mean, we obviously drank correctly where, you know, every, what was it, like every four or five breweries we stopped? Uh, I think it was stopped. every six. Every six or seven. Um, Small pint, you know, they were just giving you shots of two beer. Ounce, two ounce pours. Two ounce pours. So, you know, every six would be, uh, you know, full beer, you know, essentially. Um, so we, we you know, chug at least two or three chugs of water mm-hmm. uh, in between each Stay eight. Stay hydrated. Six, it, was, eight it was a little warmer than usual for this time of year. Yeah, it's, you know, it could have been a heck of a lot hot, hotter, though. Oh, yeah. Well, and it was supposed to rain, so that was nice that it, since it was an outdoor event, it, would, it was nice that the weather held off for us, which was good. I think rain or shine, people will still drink oh, beer. Oh, absolutely. And they'll, they'll get parkas. And yeah. part of that is, uh, with the Beer Fest event, they do have the one tent on the one side. So if, you right. know, something to we're going to hey, where everybody well, can kind of And most of them tent. have tents anyway, like the, the small tents around. Right. So, right. yeah. So, so it they'd make it work. Yeah, it, it, was, it was fun. So if you, uh, if you were out there last night at Warner Park, yeah. uh, actually it was from 2 to 6, Unless you bought the VIP tickets and got in at twelve thirty, I know minutes. I'm a little jealous. They also got a little steel mug, the stainless steel. Those yeah, are really, those really cool. Sweet. Yeah, um, co- just do a couple shout outs sure. to a few yeah, breweries. Uh, the Benson Brewery, uh, Scratch Town was amazing. Backswing, oh, this guy's cool. Uh, Backswing, he uh, uh, tagged us in a few Twitter feeds and stuff like that. Nice. Stone Brewing Company, oh my gosh, I want to get you guys on the show. I want to get all of these on the show, by the way. Uh, Upstream Brewing, Farnham House uh, Brewing. Uh, Brickway, of course. Um, Rower and Sons uh, Brewing. From Texas. They, uh, yeah, they, they had some people down there because they got the hurricane going on, which is uh, kind of petering out now because it's uh, hit landfall, so it kind of peters out a little bit after that. Yeah. But there's still a lot of rain going on down there in Texas. Uh, Fire Tucker Brewery uh, and Confluence. Um, we're just a few. Uh, we, we, we met with, uh, I'd say 75% of the breweries there we went yeah, to. We may or may not have had something yeah. to drink from, but we at least talked to them. And cause we, I mean, to go through a brew fest and drink from every single tent, that's, that's a heck of a challenge to do all that. I'm not saying it's impossible, but, uh, yeah, I don't, that's yeah. I have, I have a high tolerance, but I don't know if I could go through an entire beer fest and drink from every single. Yeah, beer. no, you know. <laughs> well, and then there's some there that you've you've had over and over again. And right, like, yeah, you can You know, those. I've had that one before. Yeah. Um, now, granted, some come out with new stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I drink a lot of uh, stuff from Stone Brewing Company, and they came out with a solid one that kind of tastes like uh, Fruity Pebbles when you oh, drink yeah, it. Oh, yeah, sure did, yeah. Oh, it was so good. I, I don't remember the name of it, but that was, that was pretty decent in my book. Yeah, there, and there, what was the one? I, someone had mentioned they had drank one that was like key lime pie that they didn't like. And I said, now, wait a minute. Just because you didn't like it, 
you got to respect the fact that you can make beer taste like key lime pie. Right. And he's like, you got a point. You got a point. He's like, I wouldn't order it, but the fact that you can make beer taste like key lime pie, <sighs> it's pretty amazing. Who are those guys that we were standing next to at actually Stone Brewing when we got down there and we were telling like uh, dad jokes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. a good time. Yeah, they were good people. Yeah, good people. It's always a good time there. Uh, so we should, should we start moving in? Yeah. Uh, uh, let's dive into what we are drinking. Sangria. Sangria. <laughs> yeah. So this was um, this was something. If you are not familiar with sangria, it's uh, from Portugal or Spain. I mean, it's a, kind of uh, the the history there is from one of the two places there. It's a mixture of. Uh, mainly wine but it also has some brandy it has some sugar and some fruit chunks in there uh usually served over ice in a you know in a pitcher so what we did i went in and scoured the internet and i found one of my favorite people for um uh for recipes alton brown i enjoy his recipes a lot and he had a pretty interesting one so we did uh, two cups of sliced fruit. Britt, you did uh, lemons. I limes. did more than two cups of fruit. Let's just Which say is that. Fine. Which is good. Uh, what'd, you, I did, what'd you do? I did. Uh, so each one of these containers, we we've got two different kinds of wines here. Right. So I did a, a also have the wines. Yeah. Up here too. I did a full uh, in each one of these. I did a full orange, mm-hmm. full orange, uh, uh, a full lime, a uh, full lemon, uh, a full peach, uh, and a full pear. Nice. Yeah, and we added sugar on top of that. So, but it's and not overly added, sweet, which is interesting. we added brown sugar instead of white sugar to make it not right. as sweet. Um, and I was hoping that more of the the peach and pear would come through this. Um, with that said, uh, when you guys do make sangria, it tends to get a little gritty. Um, you get a lot of seeds in it. I recommend getting a little tea strainer. Mm-hmm. You know, and we were over at the folks earlier this evening, and they were. My father was actually using this, mm-hmm. and I was all like, oh. Uh, cool. What are you doing? He's like, I got to strain some of this water that he made, which put, was awesome. Let's yeah. talk about he that. Put water, cucumbers, and lemons, and mint. and mint in there. Uh, but he was straining it so you didn't get any of that gunk in there. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I'll tell you, it, it did work because I did strain the the, the first batch of uh, sangria that we've got going on here, and there was just a pile of gunk in the bottom oh, of this yeah. thing. So yeah. I'm I'm kind of glad that we grabbed that strainer from him. Right. Thanks so for letting us borrow it, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Thank y'all. Uh, back to the recipe a little bit. We did the fruit. We did uh, originally the recipe called for two t- two tablespoons of sugar. We ended up doing four just to make it a little sweeter. Uh, we did the brandy, and then what you do is you you mix all that. You do the the fruit, the sugar, and the brandy, and you let that macerate. <laughs> Dad's uh, watching right now. Oh, cool. Hey, Dad. <laughs> nice water. We talked about the water that you did. Yeah, Dad, no, so. very awesome. Um, but what you do is you let that macerate. You you stick it in the refrigerator for about six or eight hours, uh, which Britt did that this morning, mm-hmm. and uh, let that sit for a little bit. Then after that's uh, oh, uh, you you did mention that we did put some uh, brandy in there. Brandy, yes, yes. yeah, it's a uh, half cup of brandy. Did you do half yeah. cup each? Half cup one? of each one and each one, and cool. let just the remnants of all of that stuff sit mm-hmm. before adding the wine, which we just added the wine right yep. when you showed up. Just so. right, yeah, just right before I got here. So. Uh, we did two different versions. I bought two different wines uh, just because I liked the labels on them. Uh, it, I tried to find, he, he said specifically you're supposed to find a Burgundy wine, which I couldn't find anywhere there. I don't know if you have to Ron find those. Burgundy. A, a Ron Burgundy. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so I just found some reds, and I uh, I picked them because I, I wish I was better about picking wines. Yeah. And I didn't want to get like really good wines because yeah. we're mixing it with all the Red sugar table stuff. wines. That's what yeah. you want. Red table wines. So um, I just picked two that I thought the names were really cool and tied into our talk here. So that's no. And we'll get into those here in just a minute. And uh, tying into the talk, my, act- my wife actually um, did us one better as we were heading on our way downstairs. She goes... Hey, why don't you grab that cheese out of the freezer, or out of the fridge? Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, "Oh yeah, we're drinking wine. sangria. We're drinking yeah. wine and cheese. Perfect. Usually we Perfect. have nuts on the table, but this time cheese." Mm-hmm. So, um, oh, and by the way, we're drink- we're eating Vermont Sharp White Cheddar Cheese. Pretty darn good. Which you too. can pick up from right. Hy-Vee, and Brian also picked up all this booze from Hy-Vee as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. Um, the two wines that I chose. The first one is uh, Frontier Red. Yes, um, which that is what we are currently drinking on. So mm-hmm. cheersies. Cheers. Yeah, that's good. It's quite good. It's such a refreshing drink. Yep. Uh, we're drinking it over ice, which kind of leads yeah. us into the next talk that we're going to so be doing. So w- if you guys stay with us this whole program, every once in a while I'm just going to have to dip out and get more ice. <laughs> <laughs> so just FYI. Right. Um, so yeah, um, back to sangria just a little bit. Um, I have actually been to 
uh, Spain. Uh, when I was in the military, we stopped in Rota, Spain, and had some uh, actual sangria there. And that's kind of what got me on this kick of doing sangria. But the main tie-in for this one is we will be talking about Antarctica today. Nice. we got to pronounce that correctly. Antarctica. you got to get, get the C like in there. Antico Ant- Bay. Ar- Antarctica. Antarctica. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not Antarctic- Antarctica. You got, there's a C in there. So you got to... Right. Accent on the right syllables. Something like something like that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the reason I chose Antarctica was because over the last year or so, I've been seeing a lot of um, articles and things coming out from Antarctica, and I don't really believe in coincidences much. So the more I saw, the more I was like, hey, there, there's got to be something going on down there. So I, I just... Wanted to do a little research, and yeah. with this topic, if you do your research on it, it's like a rabbit hole. Like, you just, how far does this thing go down? There's so much to it, and there's the... There's th- so th- much to it, but yeah. there's also not enough to it. Right, so there's there's the theory portion of it. I mean, and sure. we're going to talk about that at the end of the program. <laughs> you like a shirt, I like yeah. it. <laughs> Hot theory, yes. Got it. Um, so, um, yeah. Lost my train of thought there for a Sorry, second. Sorry, buddy. No, you're fine. Just talking you're, about your shirt. It's a cool it's shirt. I wish I had one. Hop theory is uh, they're kind of like tea bags for your tea for your beer. So, okay. So if you gotcha. if you want better tasting beer, like if you're drinking Bud Light and you you have a bunch of Bud Light in the fridge that you want to get rid of, and you just put these little things in there and it makes it taste better. So cool, like, like coriander and orange and all that, just to give it a little little flavor. Yeah, the because f- I normally don't have that kind of beer in my fridge. Yeah, but if you had a party and somebody left something, <laughs> oh yeah, house, was, yeah, you, you just didn't want to throw it out, you yeah. know. So, Let's make this taste better. Exactly. So, gotcha. Yeah. Um, the first batch of it that I had, I it wasn't very good, but they've uh, since redone some of the recipes and they're they're not too shabby. Not too shabby. But I drink good beer, so I don't really use it as much. So, exactly. Yeah. It's it's a nice theory. <laughs> oh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's talk about some facts first with Antarctica. Um, it is the South Pole. Uh, mm-hmm. It always has not always has been. It's uh, the poles have shifted a little bit, so it hasn't always. And if you believe in uh, the Pangaea, uh, where the continent was all there was only one continent and then it split it off. So sure, it hasn't always been in the South there. But um, the Arctic is the North, and then the Antarctic is the South. So the polar opposite. The polar. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's funny because okay, it's right. funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a, uh, the land mass roughly is about two times the size of Australia. It's enormous. Yeah, it, it's huge. It's the fifth largest continent. Uh, it does vary in size depending on the season, which their winters are eight months long. They're from March to October, which is crazy. So from about uh, their, their warmer months, which are about 40 to 50 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, um, range from like November to February. That's yeah. you know, not not a lot of summer there. Uh, it is ninety eight percent covered with ice. It's uh, really uh, yeah. I must have heard a wrong statistic because I heard ninety percent. Yeah, oh wait, no wait, ninety percent of the world's ice is down there. Yeah, it's ninety nine percent covered. Ninety eight percent covered. Yeah, ninety eight percent covered with ice. Uh, and some of that ice is uh, on average a mile thick. Sometimes a little more in, right. in places. And uh, it holds 70% of the world's fresh water. Right. One place. So I read it, or I was reading this thing about um, if they, if, if Antarctica just melted, mm-hmm. that um, would not we, be good. No, yeah. Uh, it would raise the oceans 200 feet. Yeah. Um, That's so enormous. Bye bye, Florida. Bye bye, like a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The eastern and western seaboard. Yeah. Um, Another fun fact: uh, there are no polar bears. No, that's there. that's the north. They're they're only in the north. The right. only the only permanent resident down there. Well, people just Amber. think you know ice and snow and all that stuff. They're like, oh yeah, polar bears live there. Nope, yeah. they don't. No, they don't. Uh, there are two types of penguins. Only one is uh, year round, and that's the emperor penguin. They're down south. They're crazy. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. There are some seals also, but they are not a permanent resident. Uh, it is the coldest, driest, uh, making it a desert, windiest continent with the tallest. A Yes, tallest average yes. topography. You, you yeah, didn't say tallest, I don't think. Oh, yeah, you maybe you did. With highest oh highest That's average elevation. Tall, I high. was getting there. Yeah, I was getting there. Um, there is approximately 1,000 to 5,000 scientists there. 
uh, depending on the season, uh, 1,000 during the winter because it's so cold. It's like they can get temperatures like negative 170 degrees. It's crazy. Yeah, that's where you step outside, and if you're out there longer than five minutes, your you, molecules you, you go just you <laughs> freeze. <laughs> Uh, but there is also tourism, which is a newer thing down there, and that can bolster it anywhere, you know, another 36,000 or so. So you're, you're approaching the 50,000, but that's not a permanent. They're not staying there. They're staying on ships and yeah. coming on board, which is interesting if you actually, with the from the tourism aspect, there's a lot of rules and red tape that you have to do. Like you can pay for a vacation to go do that, and then because of weather, eh, sorry, we're yeah. not going to go. Uh, they can only drop a hundred people at a time on the shore. So if you're on a boat that has 500 people, they they can only take a hundred out and then they do their thing and they come back and then you can take another hundred out and do their thing and then come back. So, uh, another weird fact, um, that they say is that you should have your wisdom teeth removed, uh, before going there. Really? Well, it, and it, it's for the reason of, uh, you can't get it done while you're down there. Exactly. Um, and then another thing is they should, they said you should have your appendix removed. Now, is that now, if you're staying down there, like as a scientist, if you're going to be staying there as an extended stay? Cause if you're a tourist, you're only, you're not really staying right. if, on. If you're airport. a tourist, you could probably get away with it. But yeah, if you're going to stay down there for any, uh, length of time, uh, they recommend removing their appendix. Uh, they actually really recommend it for doctors that go down there. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to go six months down there as a doctor, let's just pull your appendix, make sure you have your windows and teeth out because you're really not going to get that done down there. Yeah, there was a video of a guy that, or a, I, don't, I don't know if there was a video, but there was a story about it, one of the doctors down there that actually performed a emergency appendectomy on himself That's down weird. there. That's, That's probably weird. why they yeah. require that now that, uh, oh, we can't have doctors down because like, no one else could operate, so he had to operate on himself. Sure, sure. <laughs> I can't imagine doing um, that. And then starting in the 80s, but really enforced uh, in 1994, there are no more dogs allowed down there. Really? I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah. Uh, so there, in the 80s, there was a wild disease that started spreading amongst the dog because that was the main mode of transportation was dog sledding. Dog sleds, yeah. Um, and then in the 80s, there was this big, huge virus that started infecting the penguins and the seals and you know whatever else mm-hmm. lived, in the, which is that's about it. Uh, started affecting that, so they were like, nope, get the dogs out of here. Yeah, they're very no serious about conservation yep. down there. So it, it, was, it was the last region on Earth to be discovered. Hmm. Because, I mean, if you think... Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, if, yeah, if you think about even uh, when sailing ships were available back in, you know, 13, 1400s, uh, they didn't go down there. No. I mean, that's, that's, that's the closest... Well, even if they did get down there, they'd be like, uh, we don't have the right gear. We need to go get right. our coats. One, if you <laughs> may, one like the, the closest point to Antarctica is uh, South America, the tip of South America. And if you leave from there and you head south through that strait, those are actually some of the most dangerous seas in the world. They're, they're very, very high winds. 25, very, 30 foot. Oh, yeah. See, well, they yeah. say that... Um, they can get winds upward of 150 to 160 miles an hour rolling off of Antarctica going into the ocean. Oh, yeah. Just I'm because sure. the uh, because it's so tall mm-hmm. and they and just no hit those valleys. And it's flat that was another area. thing, no trees. That's, I thought that was so weird. I'm like, well, it's, no a des- it's classified as a desert. The, right. In the interior. Not even a shrubbery? I know, nothing. <laughs> um, on the uh, interior, there is uh, less than one inch. It's, it's uh, eight-tenths of an inch of rainfall or precipitation. Uh, per year on the exterior they can get like an inch or over a little over an inch uh, per year sure that's nothing you know and if you think about it the whole thing is ice where did where did all that water come from but uh we're gonna, we're gonna talk about all that and antarctica is also one of two or three places one of two places uh that don't have any ants they have no ants hey. yeah weird you know there are more <laughs> ants on the world in the world than people i Strongly believe that. Yeah. Um, it's a fun fact, right? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the first confirmed landing. Um, well, uh, let's say the first sighting. So I, I I did talk about this being the last region on Earth that to be discovered. The first sighting was in 1820 by a Russian expedition. Um, which, if you think about a Russian expedition, that's amazing. The distance from Russia to yeah uh, the Antarctic. Uh, but Did they, you pack your toothbrush? Yeah, right. <laughs> they, they probably had the cold weather gear, though, because right. they were used to that stuff. Uh, but the first confirmed landing was in 1895 by a Norwegian uh, expedition. There is no government there. 
Um, so right now they, they state that there is roughly about 100 actual residents that live there. We're not talking about scientists that come for six months and leave. They, there's about 100 people there, and it's from uh, Chile and from Norway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those two countries have uh, sent people down there to start making babies. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying there's only been about eight or nine people that have been born down there. I, yeah, that seems pretty high even. I thought it was a little lower, but yeah, yeah that's... Eight, I believe, but, was but the, still, that's, the number. But still, if you think about it, we've been, uh, we've been going there for quite some time. Um, yeah, the, no government, but it is governed by the uh, Antarctic Treaty System, which are, uh, was signed by originally 12, and then they added another 38, and I think there's a total of 53 countries. It is the only there. place that has that kind of treaty as well. I know, it's pretty crazy. And now they have another one that mm-hmm. just came up. But speaking of that... Mm-hmm. Uh, Antarctica doesn't have a time zone. It does oh, not yeah. have a time zone. It, yeah. it, it, it has 24 different time zones. So uh, they say with, with per region of, of whatever country owns whatever part of that part of land, they just go off of that time zone. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. It's a, I, so, I was looking at that time zone map actually right before you came up, and I was like, interesting. 24 different time zones. Oh, is that is that what that is? That, this is the regions that are um, oh divided up by yeah, divided by yeah. the regions there. So they say I, I think they said uh, it's either nine or twelve different time zones that, but it, you know doesn't well, matter. Right, <laughs> doesn't also, matter. Also, compasses don't work there. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a neat map that I saw, and it was uh, um, there's one of the Facebook groups that I'm part of, and it uh, it was titled uh, a Second LT's uh, Worst Nightmare, and it was the whole map of Antarctica, and then the center was south. And then there was north, and, and then also north, and, and also north, and also north. Right. <laughs> and like, it was all north all the way around. Yeah. So I just, I just thought that was kind of funny. I want to go south. We'll just walk 10 feet that yeah. way. <laughs> center, then you've made it to yeah. south. <laughs> yeah, c- center is south. <laughs> um, the uh, Back to the Antarctic Treaty System. The uh, that w- what it does is it prohibits military activity, nuclear explosions, nuclear waste disposal, and mining. It supports scientific research, protects uh, the contents of the echo zone. So when you go there as a scientist or a uh, tourist, what you bring with you, you take back with you. You don't leave anything on uh, on the island or the, uh, on the continent there. It was uh, originally signed in 1959 by 12 countries and, like I said, another 38 or a few more. So there, I think there's a total of 53 now is what they, they, um, they had said. And those are the facts that I have. Uh, one more oh, go ahead. interesting fact. Um, there is a hole in the ozone above Antarctica mm-hmm. that is the size of Europe. So, wow. with that said, wear your sunscreen. <laughs> Don't right. forget that. Yeah. They said especially in the springtime because that's when it hits the worst. Well, yeah, they, they, they say that uh, anytime here uh, you know, in the Midwest when we think winter, you don't think of getting a sunburn, but y- you do. Because mm-hmm. uh, it reflects right off of that snow. So, yes, wear your sunscreen. Should we get into a uh, kind of timeline of events here for uh, sure. for, for unique things that happen yeah. here? You'll have that timeline of events. Yeah, okay. so I want to go through that, and we can talk about each one if you want to talk about it. But, sure. Uh, so I want to go back. We'll see what piques my interest. Yeah, excellent. So I... Um, <laughs> Peak. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I want to go back. Uh, back to the, like the 1920s, uh, just to get kind of a basis of what's been going on down there. So uh, there's this uh, pretty cool individual named uh, Admiral Robert E. Byrd. Uh, mm-hmm. He was kind of like the Indiana Jones. Byrd, Byrd, Byrd. Byrd is the word. B-Y-R-D. Oh, that was close. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he did his first Antarctic expedition uh, from 1928 to 1930, and he did his second one from 1930 f- in 1934. Faja would like to bring up a good point. Um, it is one of the coldest places, but still has one of the at most active volcanoes. Yes. They said originally there was 79 that they thought, and now mm-hmm. they think there might be more than yeah. 79 volcanoes. Wow. Yeah. 79 volcanoes in an iceberg. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> I get it. Yep. Can you dig it? <laughs> I can dig it. Um, so, yeah, did a second in 1934. In 1938, he uh, was invited to Germany. Because uh, they wanted him to participate in a uh, expedition down there, which he declined. Uh, and if you're familiar with history at all, 1939 was the start of World War II against mm-hmm. the Nazis mm-hmm. from Germany. Mm-hmm. So, however, he did his next 
Antarctic Service Expedition, which was backed by the U.S. government. In Operation High Jump? Nope, nope. not yet. Gotcha. Uh, this was this was Antarctic Service Expedition. That was just gotcha. the name of it. Just go check it out. 1939 to 1940, which was the same time the Nazis went down there. Mm-hmm. Um, coincidence? Uh, uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. So um, Operation High Jump, that was... Uh, going down there and seeing what the feasibility of things down there were going to be. He came back with all sorts of information. That was 1946 to 1947. Uh, came back and he said, hey, there's a bunch of stuff down there, a lot of uh, natural what a, resources. What an interesting job. Hey, go down there and check it out. Right. <laughs> and he had a whole fleet of people yeah. with him. Just down go there. down there and check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then his final one was Operation Deep Freeze, uh, which... There are multiple deep freezes. This was the first one in 1955 to 1956. He passed away in 57, I believe. He started with a Kenmore, and then he went to a... No, (laughs) not that kind of deep freeze. No, (laughs) yes. So the Operation Deep Freeze, um, basically it's just a supplying of down there, going down there and supplying all the um, the scientists. Oh, yeah. I would uh, would take a solid year just to get everything down there that you would need. I'm pretty sure that it's like they do that every five or ten years. Well, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Just the, like yeah, build new structures and yeah. all, whatever needs to be done. Fix stuff. Get the old we crap need out of there. Twelve more nails. <laughs> just, <laughs> just send a thousand. Yeah. I know I'll need more though. Right. <laughs> so there's those series of events. Um, so that was his expedition, just animal birds expeditions. Um, and then very closely following the end of his ex- expeditions down there, they signed the Antarctic Treaty in December of 1959. Uh, which made it effective in June of 61, which I thought was interesting. That's like a whole <coughs> year and a half later. Like they sign, every, everybody signed it in 59, December of 59, but a year and a half later is when it became effective. I thought that was interesting. And it expires. Yeah, that is kind of weird. It expires in 2048. Okay. So like wow. almost, almost 80 years. So what are they, I mean, I, I, I guess I didn't stop and read the treaty. Uh, but do you know what it depicts? Yeah, th- and that's what I had mentioned earlier. So okay. you cannot uh, you cannot explode a nuclear weapon down there. You can't dispose oh, so of any nuclear waste. It's a giant peace treaty, essentially. Basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, on the surface. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. So on the uh, surface. <laughs> <laughs> so a little more recently, um, you know, back in the '60s, that's kind of after that, it kind of simmered down a little bit, and then I started hearing things uh, about a year or so ago. Uh, about things coming out of Antarctica. And some of these are going to be, um, some of these are documented, and we're going to touch on the theory yeah. portion of that. But then we're going to sit s- down. We might get a little serious. We're going to start getting into some uh, other theories. Fun after facts this. is yeah. what I like to call Yes, fun facts <laughs> after we get through the timeline. Fair enough. So, um, so in September of 2016, um, in Mecca, which is uh, in Saudi Arabia, uh, kind of the. Um, if you've never been there, the, the, the Wailing Wall and all that. Um, they were doing some um, excavation there, and they found something. What happened next, that's kind of the theory portion of it. Um, some say there was a plasma discharge, and it killed 4,000 people. The government said that it was just a stampede. Here's what we do know. Something was found. Mm-hmm. They contacted Russia. Russia sent a ship. They took it down to Antarctica in December. And then after that, Pope Francis and uh, Patriarch... So, so, so they found this thing. Found a thing. We don't know gotcha. what this thing is. And they took it thousands of miles away from where they found this thing. Right. And in the, Antarctica. And in the documents from Russia, okay. it noted it as uh, one of two things. The first one was just object of religious significance. The other one was called Gabriel's Ark. Okay. So... All right. Uh, Gabriel, for those of you who do not know, he was an angel, uh, a messenger angel. He's the one that actually told Mary that she was going to have a baby. Um, if you um, subscribe to Islam, uh, he was the one that actually brought the divine knowledge to Muhammad. So Nice. Yeah. So that that's who he was. What's What, what the object of religious significance is, I don't know. Did he give this ark to somebody? I don't well, know. Well, I wonder... But, Part of the reason why they may have taken it down there is because they had that kind of peace treaty uh, down there, and it belongs to the or just get rid of it. Like, ooh, this is good. This is the no, nope, it's the sugar. same same stuff. Is it? No, but we yeah, added we added sugar, a little more sugar, sugar to, to it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. I like it. We uh, we started off with just two tablespoons of the brown sugar, but I added two more tablespoons yeah, of brown sugar. Just a little, little sweeter. sweetened it up a little yeah, bit. I like it. 
Um, so like uh, back to what we do know, what we do know is Pope Francis and Patriarch Kirill, uh, he is the, um, the head of the Russian Orthodox church there met in Cuba and this Cuba, Cuba. And this was the first time in a thousand years that those two churches, uh, met, uh, for the very first time. And immediately following that meeting, Patriarch Grill went down to Antarctica to perform a religious ceremony. Hmm. So yeah, hmm. after the Russians Things took that it down, go. Hmm. yeah, he's he's from the Russian Orthodox Church. Russians took down this object of religious significance down to Antarctica, and so he went down there. Hmm. Interesting. That was February of 2016. So after that, um, October 2016, WikiLeaks uh, released. Uh, I think it was like 24 pictures of Antarctica. Was this a recent release? October 2016. Yeah, I was actually just watching that right yeah. before you showed up. So it's not even a, yeah. I mean, we're not, yeah, not even a year it is a, a ago. Recent, you know. So recent. what the significance of those pictures, significance of those pictures are, we don't know yet. Why they released them, we don't know. Um, I think people are trying to find coded messages in it, which you can do in a JPEG, but um, that, that jumps into more of the theory portion of it. What we do know is that WikiLeaks, which is notorious for releasing information that the government doesn't want you to know, released 24 pictures about Antarctica. So that's where that stands. Uh, also in October, um, so if, you, if you're looking at the timeline here, Russia goes down, takes this down, this thing down in December of 2016. Um, WikiLeaks in October releases all the pictures. Um, in October, the late October of 2016, all countries with rights to Antarctica signed a treaty banning fishing. Now, the first report that I read said banning fishing in Antarctica. As I dug a little deeper, it said it banned fishing in the Ross Sea, which is the largest por- largest sea on the outside of Antarctica, right off the Ross oh, Ice Shelf. you got a map. Look yep. at that. That's so nice of you. So, to just right here, this is where New Zealand maybe, is. Right maybe let people yeah. see this. Yeah. So on the uh, the southern part of that map, there is the Ross Sea. It's the largest sea. It's it's closest to New Zealand, yeah. is what that is. So um, they ban- and banned fishing in it for twenty five years, or excuse me, thirty five years. So that treaty expires in twenty fifty two. So the first treaty expires in twenty forty eight. This one twenty fifty two. So I'm thinking about twenty fifty is going to be a really interesting time for. Well, I wonder why the they banned fishing. Interesting. I now Antarctica is all about conservation. So sure. it could be that. I don't want to jump to too many conclusions cuz uh it could have been completely Well, does it does it ban fishing for the locals? Like uh, I would assume that would be a, a source of life of a uh, of food opportunity that they don't have to ship in. I am I'm going to guess commercial fishing. Okay. But I don't okay. know if you can go out on a boat and fish. I that I don't know. <laughs> But they're pretty serious. I caught four fish a day. You're going to find me? Gosh. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, what are those guys going to eat? There's not any wildlife. Right. I, I mean, mean, you can eat so many. Uh, that is your freshest meat that you can get. Right. So much, so many freeze-dried meals. Yeah. Astronaut ice cream. Huh. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay, so again, 2016, November of 2016, John Kerry goes down there. Um, during the election... We all know about the 2016 election between mm-hmm. Hillary Clinton yep. and Donald Trump, uh, and he leaves. He just wanted to get out of town during the middle of it. I mean, he okay. was gone over election day, uh, 2016, November 2016, uh, to go visit Antarctica, and also Buzz Aldrin went down there in November of 2016. This is interesting, Brian. I'm, you're blowing my mind right now. Yeah. I guess I didn't read this portion of it. Yeah, and he had, and actually, he had to be medevaced out of there. Um, Buzz Aldrin did. <laughs> Uh, he had some, I don't know if it was a heart attack or something. He got not sick. He got really sick. a smart move to take that old of a man down there. I don't know. If, I mean, he's old, but he's not, like, of ill health. No. But apparently he was. That might get into some of the theory portions over here. Okay. So. All right. I like where we're going with this. Then. So any questions about the timeline there that you have? I mean, No, no. It's, I, I mean, mean there's, some, there's some weird tie-ins over the last year. Yeah. So I want to talk about, uh, let's, let's get into some of the... Uh, the theories, then. Okay. Yeah, let, why don't you start? Because I know you're you love theories, so let's. Uh... Well, you know, one of the theories is, um, well, a hollow Earth. 
We can go that yeah. way. Yeah. Um, they say that in the middle of, of the Antarctic, there is this giant hole mm-hmm. uh, that leads into the middle of the Earth, and uh, people have seen it. Um, there was a, a, a team that went to go check it out, and they were like, yep, there sure is a mm-hmm. d- darn deep hole down there, mm-hmm. you know, and they don't know what it's all about. Well, and they um, actually, Admiral Byrd um, apparently flew into that hole. And uh, I did find some documentation on that, but I don't know how authentic that is. But he had talked about going in there and seeing a different uh, weather system into the hole, which there are cave systems here on the planet currently that we know of Mm -hmm. that have their own weather systems. in Sure. They're they're that big. So if you're talking hollow earth, so the entrances, uh, what Britt's talking about for hollow earth, there is an entrance in the north and there is an entrance in the south. For this theory, uh, and I should put this out there that just because we are throwing them out there does not mean we believe these. No. We are just throwing out yeah. some of the theories that people put out yeah, about I, Antarctica. I've never been there, so I don't know. I, mean, I you know, after doing all this research, I know your wife was like, "Hey, Brian wants to take a trip to Antarctica now." <laughs> I do. And I was all like, "I'll go see. with him," and she's like, "Good," because I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> see for myself what's going on down there. So, um, and that speaking of that, like. I spent hours on Google Earth looking at Antarctica, and it was a little Well, the thing is, Antarctica, they... Google's only going to show you what Google wants to show you. So, like... Fair. uh, Same with NASA. NASA's only going to tell you what NASA wants you to know, you know? Um, But, yeah, Google Earth, the the hard part is they don't have roads down there, so Mm -hmm. it's like they don't have one of those Google cars just driving around, you know? No, but... However, when I was looking through it, so you can do Google Earth. Those of you that have not gone on, need to check it out on your PC, on your tablet, whatever. I, I use a tablet because you can zoom in and out a lot easier. But uh, they've kind of merged Google Maps and Google Earth a little bit together. So there's some features on Google Earth that you can find on Google Google Maps. One of those is the street view down there. Sure. Um, now, being Antarctica, it does not have streets. No. So... I hit it anyway on accident because I thought, well, maybe it, it brings you down closer or whatever. Yeah. So I hit it and not expecting a bunch of these bl- blue dots popping up. And I'm like, what, what are all these little blue dots? Because normally if you have a street view, it's the blue line on the street. So you just. Oh, yeah, yeah. So th- there are these little dots like all around the exterior and some in the ocean and all that. And I'm like, what's going on with those? So I click it and it zooms all the way in. And what it does is it brings up pictures of uh that people have taken now these aren't your standard you know cell phone picture this isn't for some high definition camera this is a 360 camera and some of them actually walked distances like they actually took a little trail like when they went and looked for penguins um weird <laughs> it's pretty cool because yeah because normally i take photos in 360 you know, they are getting pretty inexpensive. Like, I looked on Amazon, mm-hmm. and you can pick them up for anywhere from a little over $100 to, you know, what do you want to spend? Um, so they're not overly expensive. And if you were going to a place like Antarctica, why wouldn't you want to do that? Especially, oh, yeah. Why, yeah, just get it all. Yeah, especially if you belong to Google Earth and, like, you were like, hey, how can I make this better? Oh, by taking 360 photographs and uh, throwing them up on uh, Google Earth. And they can do that. And that's what those little blue dots were, where people actually taking pictures. But you also said that uh, all these little dots were pretty much around Antarctica, not no, in. No, there was nothing in. Nothing. Gotcha. In. So everything was on the border or on the outskirts in the ocean um, from shipping vessels or so touring vessels. So kind of safe to say Google hasn't made it to the middle of that place yet. I don't know that many people have. Right, right, so, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, I would I would encourage you to check that out. It was it's really cool. And what I found inter- most interesting about the whole thing was, I mean, here we are talking about a continent that is very harsh conditions, very high wind. I'm gonna go rinse this out. Sure. Um, but you know, we're taught that it has a mile thick of ice all around it, and horrid temperatures. Even in the even in the summer, the heat of the summer, it's like forty degrees, maybe forty five degrees Fahrenheit. So it doesn't really get very warm there. But what I saw in these pictures, um, and now these are all coastal pictures, so take take that with what it is. Um, there wasn't a lot of snow. I mean, there, there was, you could see snow, but when you're talking about a continent that is 98% ice, 
I was very struck by the amount of rock in mountainous regions that they have that didn't have snow on them. Right. They and were, and they, they do say that uh, only 1% of Antarctica is not covered in ice or snow. Only yeah, 1%. Right. But the, like every picture I looked at, well, not, not every picture, but well over half the pictures didn't have a lot of, they had snow in them, but of the picture, like the percentage of snow in the picture was, was not, minimal. Right. Now, there were other pictures where it was like they were in one of the scientific villages that was a little further inland, and you're like, oh, yeah, there's a lot of freaking snow there okay or sure. ice you know yeah it was yeah you could see that but uh yeah a lot of the coastal pictures there were there was not so I, I was yeah i thought that was really really weird because they also talk about the uh, the two mile high uh wall of ice in yeah. there which we're going to get into here in just a minute um i did want to talk about something that i just recently found and i don't have a lot of information about it but i found it right before i came over uh and there was a gentleman that put this information out there I give a little credence to it because it's actually from a government website that did hmm. this. Uh, it's the UK government website, and it is all about the British Antarctic Territory down there. And it was all about people that want to vacation down there, get married down there, or whatever. So, which, I mean, how cool would that be <laughs> to have that on your marriage certificate? Where, um, where'd you guys get married? Antarctica. Right. What? what? That's, that'd be like being born from there. It'd be like, the laws don't apply here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need laws. <laughs> we don't um, need roads. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, uh, on this, which didn't really seem at first, it didn't seem uh, out of place or anything until you really started reading into it. And they talked about, um, you know, what you need to do. To mm. Well, shout out. Uh, Dad is on fire with comments, which is great. And yeah. I, I, we always love comments. And sometimes I catch them more than I catch others. Uh, but they do come come through the feed a lot. Uh, so it says there is a... Se- oh, it just got deleted. Oh, there we go. Never mind. I, I got to scroll. Um, there is a South Pole telescope, is what he said, that studies dark matter that is 10, my- 10 meters in diameter. That's a big lens. That's a huge lens. Wow. 10 meters in diameter. Man. Um, oh, dark energy. <laughs> Still, he, he, he dark, changed that. Well, dark matter, dark, dark energy. energy. Yeah. So, th- yeah. Uh, probably because there's not a lot of freaking lights down there. So, yeah, that'd be a good place to put a telescope. Uh, you'd see all the stars. All oh, of them. my goodness. I Yeah, I can't imagine. They also have, um, like here in the northern hemisphere, where we have the Aurora Borealis. Uh, they have their own version down there. Just which is kind of say that because I like saying Aurora right. Borealis. Yeah. <laughs> it's so pretty. <laughs> um, but anyway, back to this, uh, this British website. Um, and it is a government website website um and i actually have it pulled up but let me um get my notes by the way this cheese is so good delicious so delicious so 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 vermont (laughs) Uh, i had it i'm pretty sure but this guy was on the government website there it is yeah foreign travel advice from the british antarctic territory it is uh (laughs) don't travel there (laughs) gov.uk was the website and uh, in it, they talk about, um, you know, all the permits that you need to do, um, the government agencies you need to contact uh, for tourism, what, what's available down there. You can do kayaking, snorkeling, glacier walking. Snorkeling. Holy cow. No, you'd thank have, you. You'd have to have a dry no, suit. No, thank you. Man. Woo. Burr. <laughs> Bumblebee tuna. Oh, burr. Oh, man. You'd be... <laughs> woo. Um, but what made this really interesting is on the next page they talk about terrorism. What? Hold on. So page one is about doing all these fun things, and then the second page is... The risk of terrorism. Um, huh? In, in Antarctica. Huh? Right? What? Right? So I also lend this a little... No, I, you know, that would be the least likely place for terrorism. Here's the thing. So uh, two years ago, uh, less than two years ago, the United States and Russian governments went down there and removed all radioactive components from Antarctica 
because of the threat of terrorism where they could walk in and go get them because there's not a lot of government there's no government out nobody's there. watching right yeah. so nobody's watching anything so they removed they thought apparently that was a the terrorist could go down to antarctica and they could grab this radioactive material and they could create a dirty bomb with it so they went and they removed all radioactive material that was down there that was brought down there probably in the 60s and 70s when they were setting up all these base camps and all that sure just to so, protect themselves yeah but still that that lends credence to acts of terrorism down there yeah. which i thought Weird. that's not something that you hear you hear about this as a scientific oh. community down there and it's it's uh peace down there there's no you know nobody's bickering down there now i'm sure that there's fighting amongst people just because of lack of communication between countries and all yeah. that and blah 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 no uh, i'm okay to be here yeah. it's okay i'm fine to be here yeah. no leave me alone i'm fine go to go take here. your own ice <laughs> over there <That's, laughs> yeah get your ice out of here quit trying to make mojitos over here all right <laughs> i got give me uh, uh this is my ice yeah <laughs> so i just thought that was i thought that was an interesting one and there's a little bit of credence to that one um a it's from a government website and two there was some stuff backing up that they're you know the u.s and russian government are a little concerned with it too that's cool so yeah i like that do you have another one um did we cover flat earth enough i mean that's i mean we can we didn't even really touch on flat earth right yeah. earth, hollow, hollow earth. earth yeah hollow earth bing yeah which let's just bring it into the next one flat earth yeah uh, uh back to hollow earth really quick sure uh, if you're looking it up you can look up agartha that's a, uh, supposedly the um mm. the name how do you spell that a g a r t h a uh supposedly that is the um agartha yeah the land the city the whatever is on the interior so sure um so yeah now from, going into flat earth flat earth instead this, of hollow earth yes. uh where antarctica antarctica surrounds us yes so if you picture uh like a petri dish and we're on the plane of the petri dish the outer edge of that petri dish would be antarctica Right. Um, some people call it a domed society. Some people call it the flat earth. Um, well, and that's where a lot of the the pictures of the two mile high ice mm-hmm. get brought into play. Like if you can't get up or beyond that ice, mm-hmm. how are you going to see what's beyond that ice? Right. And a lot of the interior, um, and I don't know this for a fact because I've not been there, uh, but from most of the stuff that what I've read is there is heavy military control on the interior. You cannot go too far inter- without somebody stopping you. And they are serious about this. Yeah. So they, uh, yeah, there is no going to the interior. Are they hiding the hollow earth entrance? Are they hiding the edge? I, I don't know. What are they hiding? What are they, what are they hiding? They're there? hiding something. Yeah. They don't want us to know something. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. So... Uh, and with that said, uh, 24 different time zones still plays and is still active if you go around the entire world as a flat. So, yeah, yeah. You can, it, can, it can happen. Yep. Um, yeah, I know I, we had talked about doing a flat earth because there was one, one time yeah, we had a rich we'll briefly here. talk about this. I know, but like that, that talk that we had and there was like question after question after question on flat yeah. earth. And yeah, so I, I think we need to do one at some point. We're not going to do that here because there's if, so if you things. type in flat earth into YouTube, you're going to go down a huge hole. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, you are. <sighs> AKA Buckle the up. eclipse that we just had. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't even get into that one. Yet. We're still talking. Well, the, the one thing that they said was you never saw the moon. Mm hmm. You know, you never saw like you never saw the moon come and you never saw the moon leave. And then all of a sudden there's a dark thing there. We're we're talking theories here, but we're not a theory show. Exactly. (laughs) No, these are all just what other people think. And, and, you know, right. I think the world's round. I do. You know, the moon's round. The sun's round. Everything's round. You know, Uh, we're a ball. Uh, But yeah, flat earth. It's a possibility. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to yeah, think about. I'm not a scientist. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's funny when people get so angry at it. It's like, guys, just like, even if you don't believe it, it's interesting to think about the possible what if. You know? I'm all about looking at the other side of the coin. Me and too. flat earth would be the other Me side too. of the coin. Me too. I try and get uh, into the mindset. When I hear about things that happen around the world, I try and get into the mindset of the person yeah. that on both sides of there. What, yeah. you know, why did that happen on this side and why did that happen on this side? Because I like to think about that type of situation what what happened in that situation why did that go down the way it did cause and effect and there could be a secondary effect right right Uh, another theory uh the nazi base in ufos oh yes they uh i did read about that and saw 
pictures, which I don't believe those pictures. I think they were doctored, but they probably they were right. When <laughs> when um, it was interesting the uh, back to the Admiral Bird that went down there and followed the Nazis down there. Apparently, the theory goes that they uh, the Nazis set up a base down there, which is possible if you do it under the ice. Um, and I'm I'm not sure what the area. I think it was um, it's been renamed because they dropped a bunch of swastikas there. And I can't think of... Because <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember the name of it right offhand. But anyway, um, apparently they, they created a base down there and they found... Which would be easy to do. Just you know, start drilling the ice. Mm-hmm. And yep. Well, and Hitler was looking for something. You know when you were a kid and it snowed really big and then you'd start digging a hole mm-hmm. and you'd create a, like an igloo type thing? Yeah, same thing. Mm-hmm. So creating a base. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Base station from uh, where I could launch my snowballs from. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they took a bunch of submarines down there, and those were actually caught down in uh, Argentina, um, which is what the, the theory goes that Hitler like actually retreated down, down there. Down in Argentina. <laughs> in the Argentine. <laughs> um, so, um, anyway... It, the the other part of the theory is that they found a UFO and they got some technology from that and they were trying to reverse engineer all that. Well, also, um, because Admiral Byrd, part of Operation High Jump and Operation Deep Freeze, uh, was going down there, um, he followed him down there right before World War II and then rejoined the effort to go down there after the war was over. And in 56, he abruptly stopped. Now, there's some differences as to why he stopped. Um, there have been reports of um, these things coming out of the ocean, uh, aerial vehicles that make no sound and totally decimated his fleet, and they kind of had to limp home, and they lost a lot of life. I don't know if there's any credence to that or what. Documentation? Yeah, but then he mysteriously died immediately following those. So. Hmm, another thing that makes mm-hmm. me go, hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hmm, interesting. Uh, that's all I had. I didn't do a whole lot of research on that because there's not a lot of research on that, and a lot of it is theories. Right. So. Uh, the pyramids of Antarctica. Yes, the pyramids of Antarctica. They have found a few of them over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and aerial photos, they've... Mm-hmm. they've sh- you, you can clearly see that there is some kind of pyramids down there. So, Could I, it, you know, at one time... Antarctica was a thriving place. It did have trees, and it did have greenery, and it did have forests of nature. Uh, but the the, the pol- poles have changed, mm-hmm. and and now it is now covered in ice. Mm-hmm. So at one point, it was a uh, habitable habitat. Yeah. Habitat. If you think about the ice that's covering it, that's over a mile thick. What could be under that ice? Oh yeah, so many different things. Yeah. So, and now we're talking about global warming, and that's melting. What are they finding? So, part one of this is the pyramids could potentially be in view. And you can go, are they natural formations? They could be. The lines are pretty straight, though, which says to me, um, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Reportedly, Buzz Aldrin had posted, when he went down there, he posted a picture of one of the, the pyramids. That has since been debunked, but it got people thinking and looking for the pyramids down there, and they ended up finding some. Like, oh, oh, e- even though, mm. even though that whole tweet that yeah. he posted now, was now fake. the majority of them are probably under the ice, but some are sticking up, and they can they can show you know the shadows mm-hmm. that uh, by the sun and all that stuff. They can see like, oh, that's yeah, that's, it's flat that's edges, that's the same the shadow yeah. thing that the pyramids have, and they're like, oh, that's a pyramid mm-hmm. right there. Yeah, there's the straight lines and the flat sides. Yeah, you can you can see them. Uh, look it up. Just just do a, a search. Don't you know? Yeah. Antarctica it? pyramids. Yeah. Um, another thing that people are talking about is the potential of an advanced civilization, potentially Atlantis, um, right. but or an Atlantis type civilization being down there that was a long time ago that is no longer being buried by this ice, and now because of global warming, the ice is melting, and we're starting to see some things. And I heard that that civilization could have been ran by. Giants, mm-hmm. uh, very large people that were you know fifty, sixty feet tall. Hmm. Yeah. Ooh, oh wow! Right? No, yeah. Like uh, they've uh, if you um, if you Google um, digging up large skeleton uh, people, mm-hmm. um, that's another thing that's kind of weird because they're they're finding these. I mean, this guy's sitting next to a skull that's the size of him, and you're like, well, if the skull's that big. 
how big's the body? Right. You know, you're just like, man, that's weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, apparently that civilization civilization lived in that. And like you said, uh, at one point in time, the world could, you know, if you want to believe that. That predates the, human yeah, history. But exactly. Yeah. Continents were all, it was one continent. Pangea. Pangea. And, yeah. and, and then it broke off. So that's where they lived was in Antarctica, which mm-hmm. has now separated and is now down there. Yep. So, yeah. It, it, could it be? I don't know. You know, there could, could be something under the ice. Um, lake Vastok. I don't know anything about that. That's one. Okay, so this is one of the lakes that's in the Russian territory down there. And um, uh, one of the things that came out about they uh, there's some magnetic magnetic anomalies coming from this lake, like some severe. We should get to the second. Okay, but uh, talk about that because I got to get ice. Yeah. So. Uh, some planes were flying over this lake, uh, Lake uh, Vostok, V-O-S-T-O-K, and it's in the Russian territory area, and it is uh, it is below the ice, but uh, when they flew over it, they had this huge magnetic anomaly, and what's causing it, they're not sure. Uh, what they did say was that similar types of magnetic anomalies can be um, attributed to volcanic activity but they said and I and I forget what the unit of measurement is um, it's like a nan nano something or whatever but uh, in those particular instances for volcanic activity it's like five to six hundred of these nano I forget the unit of measurement sorry uh, but in this in this newest one it was over a thousand so quite a bit a difference you know double or more of uh of activity there so they're not really sure what caused it or uh what but they're 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 taking some looks into that um they uh there's also the theory that uh, there's something there that they found um in the lake and again it's it's buried beneath the ice uh and they think that it's uh origin may predate that up. all of life on the planet. So think of um, if you've ever seen the movie uh, Prometheus. Brett, did you ever see the movie? Or Prometheus, yes. yeah. Sorry, so, I was reading another comment. That's, from yeah, we'll, we'll get to that one in a second. But So in the movie Pr- Prometheus, there were these, um, these advanced beings, and they were the ones that seeded life. Hmm. And they're saying that the potential of that in this lake is very real. And that's why these people have gone down there, and that's why Buzz Aldrin got sick, was because he went down to this lake and um, something happened. Sure. So, but, you know, I, do I give any credence to it? I don't know. Uh, I, I think there is an alo- anomaly there. What it is, I don't know. Pops brings up a good point. Largest people live down there? You know, we were just talking about these, yeah. you know, 50, 60 foot tall people. Mm largest penguins live down there hey <laughs> i wonder if that has something to do with the oxygen in the atmosphere because that you know why that why things are smaller than they were back you know we have the age of dinosaurs where these right. things were gigantic right yeah. they're huge biggest school buses are bigger do you know why things are smaller now why because of lack of oxygen okay. so the asteroid hits burns up everything all the oxygen gets burned up so now we have depleted oxygen levels here in the planet. So I think things we've don't just solve something. <laughs> so yeah, things don't <laughs> I get as feel big like as we've things. just solved something. Yeah. So maybe maybe the oxygen levels down there are, are higher. I don't know. Yeah, good call. P- potentially. Potentially. So finish that up, and then we'll move on to the next one, the prophecy. Prophecy. Oh, that leads me into uh, my uh, my final theory. So we we should s- slow down a little bit on the talk because. Uh, that's fine. That, that's that's all I had on on the theories, but um, so what is this next one, bro? Why don't you talk about this uh, this next one? Well, can the, I pour it? Can you, can no, pour you can't. <laughs> You're the one that bought the wine. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the wine that I bought again, I bought because of the names, and the first one was Frontier because um, Antarctica is kind of like the new frontier. Like it's the a lot to be discovered there. Uh, this next one was prophecy because in coming through some of these talks, um, they had some ties in tie a tie in to the uh, religious nature of things. 
and I got to talking to uh, Britt's father-in-law, actually. The, uh, um, and he said there wasn't really a lot of bi- biblical biblical significance to any of this. So, um, but it is fun to just think about some of these things. Uh, so that's why I chose the prophecy wine. I don't know if it's any good, but we're about to find out here in just a minute. Mm, we'll see. So I'm glad you got that str- strainer. Yeah, it's it um, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially if you're going to let things macerate and just like... It, so, so I've just copyrighted something. Mm-hmm. Strainers in these. Just automatic straining. Oh, I see what you Why not just do that? Just like put a screen over it? Yeah, no, just, yeah. Uh, unscrew cap, put screen on, screw cap on. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> That's a thing. That could no, be a thing. Million dollar idea. Well, it could be. Just you I, I said it on the radio. You heard it here. It's first. my idea. Mm-hmm. I've got it first. I've got a copyright date stamp and all that stuff mm-hmm. on it. <laughs> right. Dad's like, I'm Ooh. gonna take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like it. It's um it's a little smoother, sweeter. Smoother, sweeter. Yeah. No, 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 this is way this is a lot better than the other one. Yeah, it's not as uh not no. as harsh. Not the not sorry, the other one. Sorry, was bad. Frontier. Yeah. yeah, not the other one was bad, but uh, this is definitely a lot better. Very smooth. Just trying to compare the two here. Lot number five. Oh, the bar. This is the barbecue edition, mm-hmm. Brian. <laughs> well, and yeah. just just so you know, this was on sale for seven ninety nine. Hey, and this one was nine ninety nine. The cheaper, the better. Hey, yeah. we're, we're we're putting quality ingredients in it, so yeah. it should yeah. be just fine. Uh, the red blend. Cool. All right. Yeah. No, I like um, to. You know, if I was going to choose a winner, <laughs> prophecy winner, for winner. sure. Winner, winner, chicken winner, dinner, winner. So that leads, uh, this one, the prophecy, leads into my final theory of um, uh, the second coming. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that I lead me, or um, I'm not going to give a lot of credence to this one, just because like it was like, oh, hey, so-and-so has done the dates, and it's going to happen at this such-and-such such time. Okay. Um, they yeah, well, the next, the next big... Um, one is going to be coming like September twenty third. Is what they they're predicting. They said thirty forty days after the solar eclipse, and that's kind of what, they're, they're, what yeah. they're predicting. And that's what this this person talked about um, uh, in twenty seventeen in September of twenty seventeen. There's going to be a, a second coming kind of event or whatever. But there wasn't a lot of facts other than there was tie ins to the blood moon and tie ins to the uh, the eclipse and all that. I don't know. I don't. I don't. A lot, a lot is happening in in forty days. W- but what's interesting is I don't know what this really had to do with Antarctica. Like it came up on the Antarctic theories, hmm. but like there wasn't much tie-in other than the the Ark of uh, Gabriel's Ark going down there and all. They're, they'd loosely tied in the object of religious significance. Um, I'd really like to see that. Mm-hmm. Well. Now, okay, let's let's play this theory out, okay? So they said it's Gabriel's Ark. Gabriel was a messenger. So did Gabriel give, uh, and I know that there's uh, John, I know, not our father John, but uh, your step, or your father-in-law's Dad John. just called me out. There's apparently a patent on it already. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> um, so... Uh, Britt's father-in-law is a very big biblical scholar, and he yeah. said there's no biblical reference to any of this. So, that being said, let's just play this theory out because I enjoy thinking on these things and the possibility of what if. So, Gabriel, angel, messenger angel at that, so gives this object of religious significance. What is it? I don't know. But what do you think it would be coming from the messenger angel? I mean... If you think about it, is it is it knowledge of the second coming? Is it uh, is it how to elevate uh, humanity to the next level? What it what is it? I you know from what I was taught, God is not going to tell you when the second when the coming is going to happen. Right, but what if the angel, the messenger angel, did? Okay. All right. So somebody else told us. Like, I mean, there there are angels that go against God's will. Guess what's going on over here? You know about uh, okay. Luc- Lucifer. You know, yeah. he was he's a fallen angel. Yeah. So you know, what if what if uh, one of the angels said, you know, I'm not I'm not going to tell him. I'm going to give him this thing that might lead him to the answer. But okay, you know, I see where you're going there. You know, I don't I don't know. I like I like that possibly theory. I do. Yeah. <laughs> 
theory. <laughs> I can't prove any of that. There's no, I can't. No, I can't. No. So, you know, if you play that out, you know, is there a tie into the second coming? Maybe. Um, is it going to happen in our lifetime? Mm, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't know. I don't know. I don't think man shall not know the hour of the day. So I don't know. All right. So where are we going with this? I, I think those are all theories. That's that's all, and that's all I had for the theory. So, um, is there anything else that you want to talk about on uh, Antarctica? Because I don't really have a whole lot else oh. on that. Uh, I kind of ran the gamut, and we kind of ran through it pretty quick. I mean, we're, we're little, an hour in, yeah, we're a little, little over an hour. In. Yeah. So it might be, it might be a, sh- a little shorter talk, but uh, um, I think we got a lot of information out of there, and I want people to do their research on this. Like if you. If you found any of this fascinating, just do some research because the more research I found, the more research was available. Like it is a rabbit hole that right. you can go down. Well, it's it's funny because when we were in um, um, the beer fest, uh, we were telling people, yeah, we talk about this and this, current events and all that stuff, and they're like, oh, so what are you going to talk about now? And we're like Antarctica, and they're like, what's going on down there? And be like, what tune isn't in. going on down tune there? In. <laughs> exactly, tune yeah. in. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of. There's a lot of mystery behind that continent, um, just for the sheer fact that, like I said, there's a hundred people that live there mm-hmm. on a regular basis. Um, so you just don't know what's going on down there. I want to know what you do, like even in like northern Montana, when winter hits and you're pretty isolated up there. You, you can better st- have a stockpile of right. stuff. Right. You can still go outside and get firewood and come back in or build a fire outside if you really wanted to um, go sledding. You know, there, right. there's things to do. There in winter, it's like negative 150 yeah. degrees. You you're, better not be outside longer than about five minutes or two that, minutes. If that, yeah. So Holy cow. You better run to your neighbor's house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was watching a documentary actually on... Uh, on some people that that went down there specifically um they were nature photographers but they were scuba diving nature photographers and uh they went down there it was the summer but i mean if you think about the waters they're not warming up much no at all so they had on the dry suits but their their lips were exposed because they had to have the regulator in their mouth and he's like yeah at first your lips sting but then they go numb and it's okay <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> what? No, thank you. That does not sound don't, don't, fun. Don't sign me up for that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and then you have to rely on the holes that they bore into the ice so you can get in and out. Otherwise, you're stuck under the ice. Right. So. You better know where that hole is. Well, they have now they have they drop a like a line down there with flags, flags on it. Yeah. yeah, so they can see it's it. It's over there. Yeah. Um but still so, I think visibility is less than half a mile, I think. That's what they said. I would like to to prove or disprove a lot of these things, but uh, unfortunately, uh, there probably is documents out there that prove and disprove a lot of this stuff, but we don't have the (laughs) ability to see those documents. Right. Um, So trying to solve this, Brian. um, Solving it would be, A, step number one, going down there and going, I'm going to go on my own and go check this out, but I'll probably get stopped by, you know, well, X, Y, Z. There is tourism that goes sure. on there, and I looked into but it. they only show you the stuff that right, it's is all, touristy. R- well, not necessarily, but uh, it's all coastal. Right. You're not going inland at you all. You want to go see the whales? And there's a lot of the red tape. The whales are always around here. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Can't just see those anywhere. You want to see a pile of penguins? They are over there. <laughs> now those, pictures, like Dad said, watch where you step because oh, a lot of penguins. There's a lot of penguin poop. <laughs> a lot, yeah. A lot of the uh, those pictures that had the penguins on them. It's like a ridiculous amount of penguins. Well, when it gets to negative eighty degrees, negative eighty mm-hmm. degrees, uh, what they do is they form a circle, mm-hmm. you know, and they 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 start on the outside, but then they work their way inside, mm-hmm. and they say if you're you know on the outside of that circle, you're going to freeze to death. So es- essentially, they're mm-hmm. just like a a giant grinder, mm-hmm. you know, and they're just grinding themselves, uh, y- and also while maintaining little babies at mm-hmm. their feet, eggs, eggs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a weird thing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. If I was a penguin, I'm like, I'd get, I'd get out of here. Mm-hmm. Isn't, there Hawaii, isn't like Hawaii right over there? I could just go over there. <laughs> right. Um, another way we could solve some of this information problem is having high-quality resolution images from satellites. 
which we probably that's a whole other talk I yeah guess. well <laughs> that's something i didn't bring up when i was looking satellites. at the uh, google yeah so when i was looking at google earth um Ooh, that would be a good topic satellites mm-hmm. all right cool we could play like the dave matthews band uh satellite song. um we can't yeah. i know i know i know stuff but uh, anyway, so when I looked at some of the images of Antarctica, there are not a lot of high quality images. And some of them actually look very, very old. Like a plane went over and took some of these images and they just did this patchwork quilt, which you find some places. Um, now, you could say, well, it's Antarctica and there's no land formations. There's no uh, trees or whatever. It's just ice why do we want high but let's qual- just let's just say google buys a plane and they start mm-hmm. doing that sort of thing what i would say they're it, only going to show us what they want to show yes. us brian um so because we were doing research on antarctica i said well okay this is a land of ice is there any other land of ice on this planet that there are high quality images of the answer is yes iceland greenland yeah greenland, greenland. Gre- yes yeah, I, green. yeah remember they renamed them yeah. differently yes but yes uh iceland does have a lot of ice but i've actually gr- had a friend of mine yeah. that went and took a trip up there to greenland or iceland greenland oh yeah so and, and they're great the co- photos coastal areas uh there there are some nice coastal areas but yeah inland there's nothing but there are still high quality images of that so why not i don't know and satellites are flying over it planes are flying over well i don't know how I don't know. That we didn't get into the flight patterns over Antarctica. Oh, yeah. That was another thing I wanted to talk about is check out flight patterns uh, of the world. Um, and it's just strange the way, like, um, let's just say you're in uh, South Africa and you want to go over to Brazil. You'd think that they would just go, like... Straight across the Atlantic. St- just Yeah, just go straight across. Well, they don't. They don't. No, <laughs> they, they go don't. all the way up to the uh, northern, uh, north, uh, western tip of Africa, and they refuel there, and then they go back down. But if you drew a straight line, you'd figure out why flat Earth is flat Earth. Mm. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. There's there's some interesting stuff out there. Whether you believe it or not, you you can't deny there are some interesting things about the, what they bring up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the the flight patterns was another was one of those. Um, if they but al- nothing flies over right that part. Which I mean, I guess if you were in Australia and you wanted to get to anywhere, anywhere, <laughs> well, quick, quick, yeah. you know. Why don't you just fly over, mm-hmm. you know, and then then you're there faster right. instead of going there and then over, you know, mm-hmm. a thousand miles. And you're just like, why? Why'd you go? Why'd you go up and then left? And just, you, you could have gone down and then you would have been there quicker. Right. But no, there's no flights that way. Yep. And there's, there's also no. Well, there there are some flights that go. They they stay away from the Arctic. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, that could be a thing about like the, um. Uh, air quality there might be, you know, tougher to fly in. I don't know. I don't well, know. I'm not it, a pilot. Well, and to to your point, um, there have been people that have said, well, um, there are nonstop flights. Now, these are people that are just looking up the flights, not the people that are actually on the flights. So the people that are looking up the flights have said there are nonstop flights from South Africa to Australia. Nonstop. That's just looking it up. But what they don't say is... If it stops to refuel and no one is left on or or no one leaves boards the plane, or, yeah, boards or leaves the plane, that's not considered a stop. Yeah, so what it's just actually, getting fuel. Yeah, so what it's actually doing is it's heading north, stopping somewhere, refueling, and then heading south rather than just doing the straight flight across. Yeah. So you would assume that it would do, be able to do that, but yeah, especially nowadays yeah. with the uh, put a little bit bigger gas can on there <laughs> and a little less luggage and you should be fine yeah so yeah how, how many I, people are traveling right from there to go to there i don't know on we, a daily we, on a daily basis we took a little detour on this one so oh, we did a yeah, little bit so. sorry that That's happens right. um the more we drink sometimes the more we detour yeah nothing wrong with that i don't know that we can af- you know really solve this problem other than information 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it, the possibility of having... Well, it w- wasn't there an act where it was like declassification of uh, uh, it's like military fi- documents is yeah. 15 years? But they can still be redacted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you yes, see where I'm going You there. can <laughs> have the document. It's going to be all black highlighter, but... Uh, right. Yeah, or black Sharpie. Let us know, government. Yeah, but they're, they're not. They're not going <laughs> to. So it's interesting. I find I find Antarctica an interesting topic just because a questionable it's a, place. Yeah, I find it, which is why I want to go there now. It's on my bucket list now to go there because I want to see for myself what it's know. all about. Yeah, not that I want to go to the interior of the island. Yeah. I mean, if we could, that'd be sweet, but I, I don't think you can. But I would just like to go there and uh, see the icebergs and see the seashell, the uh, the two mile high seashell. I want I want to see those things, with my own eyes. I'd say, like yep. I'd like I'd like to drive around or I'd like to boat around it. Yeah. So have you seen some of the the ways they get around? I forget what the names of these machines are, but they they like top out at like eight miles an hour, nine miles an hour. Oh, you're talking the, the snow track machines? Basically, it's a box on snow tracks. Yeah. 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 It's a, yeah. You can Arctic cat. Yeah. Now yeah. you, you can do like the uh, uh, the snowmobiles and all that, which are a lot faster. Yeah, yeah but yeah. that's for like one or two people, right? So, but no, if I were to do it, I would want to try to go around the circumference of. It. That's another thing. Like if you want to get which the, is eight point one million or yeah, eight point one million miles. I know it's fourteen. 14 million kilometers. Yes. I don't know what that... I think it's more like five or six... 5.1 million... Somewhere in there. Miles. Yeah. Yeah, that's landmass. Landmass, yes. Yeah. Landmass. So, in the summer, it's going to shrink a little bit. So, if you could take a ship... I think it's... I think somewhere I saw that it grows... It's like 40 or 80 feet a day. It grows. That's crazy. Yeah. Just, you know, it's cold. It's cold. It's yeah. cold. <laughs> when you can freeze salt water... You know it's cold. You know it's cold. Yep. That's all I got. And for, uh, with that, <laughs> that kind of boggles my mind. Now that you just said that, freezing salt water. Uh, don't you throw salt down to break up ice? <laughs> yeah, but it gets cold enough. It's gonna. Uh, that's the thing with the salt. It uh, it may melt that ice, but it can also le- also refreeze it. Sure. You know. Sure. It, only to a certain point. Yeah. I think that's like negative nine degrees or something like that. But if you're hitting negative one hundred and fifty. Salt's not going to matter. All right, so, all right, all that, right. That's all we got. We're yep. gonna we're gonna we're gonna call it. So yeah. le- before we end it, though, um, is there a theory that's the most plausible for you? <laughs> I mean, I'd say flat Earth, but uh, I mean that's that's kind of out of the book. Uh, it Antarctica is uh, a place that not many people know about. Oh yeah. Uh, which is funny because it's on this earth mm-hmm. and you know, they do say that only, you know, uh, less than 50,000 people a year go there. Well, I was going to say 30 to 40% of this earth we've actually checked out. Well, it's less is known about Antarctica than it is the oceans and we don't know the oceans very well. Right. So, so there's that. Yeah, there's there. <laughs> there's, there's that. that. Uh, uh, the most plausible for me was the whole, um, the, the terrorism aspect from the, the UK and all that stuff, which says to me we're not being told the whole truth of what's really going on down yeah, there. Yeah, my, my, I guess what I would, what I would believe is there is something down there that they don't want to show us, uh, but is very significant to our life. Yep. Yeah. Uh, whether that be aliens or, uh, whether that be religious or, you know, you know, they don't want to show us God lives down there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, an advanced civilization that exactly. once was that predates human history. That's now visible because of global warming. Exactly. Ice is melting. I don't know. They're definitely keeping it under wraps. And uh, you know, like you said, it was twelve, and now it's you know thirty-seven countries out there. Fifty-three. Fifty-three countries yeah. out there that say the same thing, mm-hmm. which is weird that all these countries came to an agreement on something, right. which these countries don't agree on things all the time. Yeah. Yep. But they all agree on this. Right. So. Weird. We're going to leave it at that. We're going to pull it. Um, 
This has been an episode of Drink Talk. We have been talking on Antarctica, and we have been drinking on Sangria. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's good. Because we associate with that war- with warmer places, which we want to be, and we're drinking it on ice, which we've been talking about a land of ice. Right. So there is our tie-in on that one. Um, yeah, that's all I got on that. My name's Brian. I'm Brett. Thank you for joining us. Uh, join us for another episode of Drink Talk yes. coming up soon. Boom. Mm-hmm. All right. Bye-bye, Facebook. Bye. <laughs>